a plain bottle of water, or H2O, hydrogen and oxygen. It looks, well, fairly inert, but the people behind the artificial leaf claim that the chemicals in water have enough potential power to revolutionize our energy problem. Harvard professor Dan Nocera decided in the early 80s that the chemistry of plants was the most likely place to find an answer to the world's long-term energy difficulties. So this is Science 101 for an idiot like me. Can you just explain what it is that you're trying to do? Sure. We all know the sun's out there. Yes. And you can use it today with solar panels. But what happens when the sun goes down? Right. Can't use it. And so what you do is you need to store it. And what we make is a solar fuel. And the solar fuel is hydrogen. And where would you get that? We get it from water. So actually, we can take sunlight plus water to make hydrogen and oxygen. So water is made of hydrogen and oxygen. You're splitting those gases. That's right. And then that hydrogen you can use just like you can use any other fuel. Yeah. So you need something in between. Um, in nature, it's a leaf. We made an artificial leaf that works almost in principle the same way a leaf does. So it's catching the light and being the intermediary to take water to hydrogen and oxygen. A silicon wafer is coated on two sides with catalysts. One side produces hydrogen and the other oxygen. A barrier between them allows the two gases to be collected separately. Splitting water into oxygen and hydrogen is not new. This is a very old theory, as people have been doing it for a long time. Yeah, so people knew how to do that from almost day one, when electricity was sort of discovered. Right. They immediately passed it into water and split it, but they used a really expensive material, platinum. Right. Given the fact you accept that this is not a particularly new thing, what is new that you are doing? Yeah. So what's new is we've made catalysts that can be interfaced with things like silicon, and these catalysts have a whole bunch of new properties. They're cheap, inexpensive, earth-abundant materials. They form by self-assembly, so it's easy to manufacture. Right. And that's the big revelation. That's right. You've set up a small experiment. I have. Haven't? We have one. OK, well, let's go. I'm very excited. Let's go. Right, let's you go. lead on. You lead on. OK. There we are. I do. What makes the design groundbreaking is that rather than relying on precious metals like platinum, the artificial leaf uses a combination of the cheaper, more widely available materials, cobalt, phosphorus and oxygen on one side of the wafer, and nickel, molybdenum and zinc on the other. What happens with the leaf is sunlight comes into the leaf and it makes a wireless current a charge. It charges itself up. So in an ordinary leaf, there is actually a bit of current yeah. there. They're buzzing with electricity, just no wires. Right. It has two catalysts. One splits water to oxygen. Which is why trees not give, give up oxygen. oxygen. The protons go to the other side of the membrane and are reduced to make hydrogen. But you don't get hydrogen gas. It stores it as a solid form of hydrogen. And ultimately, it translates it to CO2 to make sugar. So what we have here is um, the leaf itself, and it has silicon, and it's coated with my catalyst. Okay. And now what I'm going to do is drop it into this container, put in some water, and so as we turn on the sun... Oh, I'm seeing some bubbles. And now it's making oxygen, and then the protons are running around to the backside here, yeah. and they're making hydrogen. So eventually, all the water would just be used up and it would turn be, up into gas. That's right. So this is looking just like the leaf. Sunlight in, wireless current, I charge it up, two catalysts, make oxygen and hydrogen. That's very good. Thanks. That's very good. And this is a real accomplishment. Nobody's ever been able to just take something in an open glass of water, drop it in, hold it up to sunlight, and just have it go. So it's possible to produce the hydrogen fuel wirelessly, but the next step is to capture the gases released by the catalyst and then store them for use in a fuel cell that generates electricity. So this is how the world could work now. We could go buy it. Right. I could buy a solar panel. Like that, OK. And now what's going to happen is the, sol the sun comes on. And now what the sun is doing is it's generating a current, an electrical current, and it's coming through these wires. Yeah. 
And then here's the catalyst wired up now. It's wired. And I'm splitting water to oxygen and hydrogen. Now the hydrogen and oxygen are stored as a gas. Okay. The sun goes down. Now we, we don't have any more electricity, but I've made a fuel. So if I take the hydrogen and oxygen and feed it to this fuel cell, I should be able to run my house. So now there's the hydrogen and oxygen. <gasps> and there we are, we can power our house. Fantastic. So that's the entire cycle of how it would work. This is literally very small scale. Yes. If you could scale it up. Yes. Uh, what sort of revolutionary power does that have right. for us? You would, for the developed world, people with energy already, uh, I would need to split around 10 to 15 drinking bottles of water to store enough energy for two days. And I wouldn't need any electricity or gas in my house. You'd be good to go. Your house becomes its own power station. If we ignored cost, dollars and cents cost, you could do this for me today? I could do it for you today. At this stage, the artificial leaf is a technology demonstrator. The challenge remains of how to overcome the high engineering costs needed for the light harvesting infrastructure to make it commercially scalable. So inventions like this are what's driving the capital cost down. And how soon does this actually become something we might buy? In the not too distant future. I'll oh, say in yeah. under five years. Okay. Under five years. Well, that's, that's very precise for a scientist. <laughs> Thank you very much. How about 4.9324 <laughs> well, years? That's even more precise, but I don't really believe it. <laughs> okay. This artificial leaf has the potential to provide at least part of the answer to the world's power problem. Not only can it create clean energy, but it could revolutionize our idea of electricity networks. It doesn't need a large power station or a huge electricity grid. And that is a small bit of technology which has the potential to make very dramatic changes to the entire world. <laughs>